Welcome to Creative Spaces Podcast with Guy Zwick, Chief Creative Officer of Highway 85 Creative. In each episode, we will discuss creative ways to define your space and build your brand. Well, welcome to the uh, another edition of the uh, Creative Spaces Podcast. Uh, it's the first one on the last day of the show. Today's Wednesday, right? I believe so. Beautiful. The hump day. <laughs> I like those days. Uh, I'm joined by special guest Emma Bicca. Correct. Wow, I got that right. My last name's Samil, and all uh, and, and, and growing up, Scott Samelli. Oh, present. Hi, yeah. Uh, hello. <laughs> anyway, she's with PeopleNet, and uh, I'm really happy to speak with her. Let me just kind of jump right into it. Emma, tell me who you are, and 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 uh, and. and why you're here and, and what you do and your company just kind of give me the yeah, whole rundown for sure so um i'm emma from minnesota i work for PeopleNet, which <laughs> is in the trucking transportation industry so we do a technology um that goes in cab for trucking fleets oh, okay um so not necessarily like the industry that every girl grows up and dreams of sure but maybe like if, you're in, of? if you're in minnesota maybe <laughs> it is right a lot of truckers so i've been with them for It'll be eight years oh, wow. in um, in April. Okay. I started as an intern. They haven't been able to get rid of me. Um, <laughs> Must so I, good yeah, at you. <laughs> right. So I am part of the marketing team, okay. and we have a pretty lean team. So I get to do a lot of different things. I focus primarily on our social media as well as all of our trade shows and events. Okay, so, so you, like a, you guys do you go to trade shows for then. sure? Okay. So it's a very it's like an old school industry, right? right. So publications, magazines are still very prevalent right. and trade shows are still like really big. So we participate in probably like 90 trade shows oh or some goodness. form or fashion. In, in North America, like Canada as well? Or? Yeah, okay. we're in Canada as well. Okay. So like yeah. A lot of really niche specific like website or, or trade shows where it's just po- folks with For sure, yeah, pop-up popping booths. it up. Yeah. In and out. So you do, you are, betcha. You, are you on, are you on the, uh, you betcha, we got a fish. She said you betcha. Oh, we're going to get an oofta. Oh. What did you say? Oofta. Jump, just join us oofta. for a little bit. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to have uh, one of our other Minnesotans join us. Uh, Thanks for coming on the show, Angelina. Hey, hey, good morning. Give me three Minnesota things. I heard, I, I obviously. Oofta. What is that? Oofta. It's, it's like, like, oh you boy. S- like, <laughs> oofta, you betcha. So like, I would like. Long day, sit oh. down. Oof. Like, uh, I like, like something happens, like, oh, you get an email that, so, it, like, some exhibitor did something they're the worst, right. and you're like, oh, oof. You know, I think, can I, <laughs> I can I it. use that? Because here's the thing, Wait, my, go my, ahead. My, my, my four-year-old daughter, um, Stella, mm-hmm. she'll say, you're darn tootin', but she goes, you're darn it tootin', and it kills me every <laughs> single time. In fact, I might have to have put her on FaceTime. She's the best. Yeah. Anyway, um... I'm just talking to Emma um, from people in that. I thought I, have, I don't have hey, a co pilot, okay. so you should just jump in. So yeah, why not? You do a lot of trade shows, niche specific trade shows to the to the trucking industry, right? So it's a lot of state associations where uh, right. it is like in the you know the Holiday Inn ballroom, and they're just a right. little tiny pop up. Right. Like you just plug into the outlet that's next to you. Um, we do some larger industry shows, right. so we have a twenty by twenty or a ten by twenty, and then we host um, one annual conference do for you our really? customers. Do you have to run that whole thing yourself i am a part of a four-person team right. that handles it wow. how big is that how many people we have about two thousand people uh, oh, 85 this... exhibitors 350 educational sessions oh so you put on your own event yeah and it's in every year when is that no it's in august september so okay. this year it's in september it's in houston oh you, you switch it around where it is yeah oh, okay cool. okay we try to do two years in a row to try to find some like I mean, it's that's a lot. That's, so, that's and it's none of our like full time job. That's, oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know really? that. So you guys are doing this sort of on, sort of you know, right, like like quote unquote on the side, but oh like trying wow. to fit it in. Not so. when you're here. So I'm how never do you like fit that, that in? Oh my god! I mean, so, yeah. two thousand. So I, I um help a client of mine put on a similar show or used to anyway, and it was a, it was a thousand people at most over four or five days. The hotel and the contracts oh, oh and the wayfinding, digital AV and production. You need a whole team for that. Like, it is. And well, and you, but if you ask anybody outside, they're like, oh, don't you just like pick beef or chicken? That's a big joke. We joke in our team. Uh, they're like, oh, don't you just like pick beef or chicken? I got something to say to that. <laughs> oh Oofta. What's up now? Hot you know. dog. Yeah. I love don't it. You know? oh, oh, don't you know? Don't you know? Up on, um, there on the lake, man. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> anyway, so people net and you and you and so mostly so you're here today as a as an attendee and a speaker right you guys aren't exhibiting correct yep so what did you speak on so i spoke this morning on social media Uh, my session's called unleashing the power of social media okay i uh this is my seventh year presenting that session at exhibitor uh which is awesome so i attended for the first time eight years ago sure 
I went to a peer-to-peer -peer roundtable and they asked what I thought of the show right. and I said, you know, we could really use, you could use some more social media classes and they're like, well, do you want to propose one? Really? The, the, the CMO, the John Pavic fellow? He, um, yeah, he... it was one of the members of the advisory board wow. connected me. He's like, why don't you write up a proposal? And uh, here we are seven years later wow. and uh, it's been fantastic. I was part of the conference advisory board with the exhibitor for ah, a couple years. I did a couple of the fast tracks I spoke at. Uh, That's so let me ask you a question. This is a part time job? Like what do you do like the other quote unquote free time that you Well don't so have? I focus on our social media, our trade shows, um, and then you know, lead management and we're just kind of a No, but this is, is oh. this but this is are you full time at people now? Yes. Okay. So yeah. other people are not doing it full time. Right. Oh, okay. That makes because you were saying all these trade shows plus social media plus yeah. teaching, you have to be full time. Yeah. Okay. So your your class on leashing social media, your is it a was it like a forty five minute session? Like what was it? Ninety all about? minutes. Ninety minutes you had to speak when for? When I started wow. it was a half day workshop, it was three hours. That was a long time. Still that's even right. even ninety minutes in front of a bunch of people who might not be sold on social media still. Yeah. So can you give me an idea of what your class like, what how it goes? Yeah. So what I really have learned is that I like it to be interactive. Okay. Kind of just how we talked about how we like to listen to podcast sure. reviews. I want it to be engaging. I don't think anybody learns when they're being talked at. Well, exactly. And what I love about social media is it's it's constantly evolving. So right. there's no way that I could have every experience that you know I'm the one source sure. of all social media knowledge so I really try to encourage um, my attendees to engage and speak up and share their stories or share their experiences ask for feedback right. and try to engage it usually takes about half halfway through the class and you'll have one like brave soul that says something says something and then people are like oh it's okay to talk uh, yeah, that's how it, I mean, you, it is when you're on the other side of the oh, audience sure. same kind of thing one for person sure. and then and usually when someone talks, it's an opportunity for you as the leader to sort of make that a, an educational yeah. spot, right? Right. Like, what are, what are some of the things you're talking about? Is it all just reactive to their questions, or do you try to... No, so kind of my key topics is about picking what platforms to be part of. Okay. Um, so how do they determine, instead of just being like, I need to be on all the platforms right. just right. because. Right. Uh, we talk about how to handle like negative situations. Okay. So when people say not nice things about your company... Uh, how do you handle that? Right. What do you do? Creating a social media marketing plan is one of the topics that we discuss, uh, as well as you know determining what social media success means and then automation versus real time. All right, so this is stuff I probably should have went to this class, but I, I'm and I'm a fake social media. I did social media for, for um, a, a few clients over the years, but it's the same same stuff. It's but I'm sure. Well, let me let me cut to the chase for your for people net. It's an old school industry, mm -hmm. right? A lot of PR, probably direct mail, trade shows, and, and events. So what do you, like, what's their social media plan? Yeah, so I have that kind of benefit of coming out where I'm relatable, where it's not, you know, the, the millennial generation, sure. which is my generation, but I hate the term millennial. Yeah, so I don't, see a, I don't see a beard and a beanie on you, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, not hipster millennial. <laughs> There's a difference, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, ent the entitled hipster skinny jeans. Well, and like it's the broadest generalization, like 18 really to 35 please no, no I, it, it, that's a story from another yeah. time but I'm right so, we, I digress no, no, so. that, that's, a, that's what this show is for we'll come back to that no one's here if you, we'll get a cup of coffee here we'll have a good time oh, right. you already have one beat me to the punch so, yeah. but no but for people in that so you're talking about <clears throat> your own social media plan so what do you what platforms are you on? Yeah, so when I started at PeopleNet, they had a really light offering. And again, this was when I started PeopleNet was eight years ago, which okay. eight is a long time in social media oh, years. Yeah. It is. So a lot was different, quote unquote, back then. And so what we focus on primarily is Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Okay. Those are the three platforms because I'm a believer in quality over quantity. Sure. So rather than being on all the platforms because they're fun and cool, right. being on the right ones and being able to to focus time in I couldn't I couldn't agree more but let me ask you a question and this is kind of kind of put you in the spot I'm kind of lost my love affair with Twitter if you're a celebrity or a singer or a football player and by the way uh, why, are you guys getting rid of Case Keenum you letting him go we are I don't get it I don't I get don't your, know. I, don't, I loved him he I, just also seemed like the nicest guy absolutely and he took you guys to the NFC championship game and again yeah. I digress well, but the point is painful. if somebody should have sent our team to Philadelphia thank you. I don't know who was there <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you but on the Twitter side of things um, um, like 
do you think with your older school network, you guys still, you guys get something out of that? So with all of our platforms, we don't have a super high engagement rate. Right. What I'm trying to do is get content out there and be seen as a thought leader. Okay. Um, and any engagement we do get is awesome. We right. have some folks that will engage back with us, but we're really just trying to be out there and have a presence. So for our events that we do, right. we have a hashtag. Perfect. Do we get a lot of traction outside of, you know, our internal postings? No, right. but we get a little bit. And that way people, I think a lot of folks that are maybe in the older generation sure, are sure. maybe on Twitter, but not posting. Maybe they use it just for news and That's they don't too. want to share. At least it's out there. Yeah, right. there's, there's a lot of those social lurkers where I'm just looking at it. In fact, I, we I call become, them creepers. But yeah, right. No, but then I, I might, yeah. I might be that some, cause here's the thing. If you're a politician or some sort of a celebrity and you have, it's, it's a great megaphone, but if oh, you're just, sure. you know, ABC brand mm-hmm. or a trucking company or a trucking technology company. But you know what? You never, sometimes with Twitter, you don't you, know who's going to reach. You don't. Right? One person might click it, like it, it might go. So, hey, listen, if it's just as easy to come up with a plan that says, all right, it's not the same message on Facebook as it is on Twitter, but if I could just sort of share something, it's not, it doesn't hurt exactly. you. Exactly. If it 80% doesn't of hurt. the content's already created, right. why not use exactly. it? Exactly. Leveraging content that's already there and right. just kind of adjusting it for the different platforms. Perfect. And then to your other point, don't do that for nine other platforms either. It's okay to pick one or two. Exactly. I mean, it, these days with Instagram going on to Facebook, it's a big medium, but it's more of a visual medium. Right. If, like, com- we don't have a super sexy product. Right. So, Instagram isn't our jam. I love Instagram personally. Sure, sure. Um, but, you know, we're not there as a business because it doesn't fit our ideal customer. Maybe maybe it would be in 50 years, but right. for right now, so that's perfect. So, um, this you, you, you come here seven years. And you teach class now, and you're full time with people in that. And how cold is it in Minnesota right now? Well, actually, it's only ten degrees colder in Minnesota <laughs> today than it is here. For real? We've we've haven't gone below zero a lot this year. What? We just got like a foot of snow well, the other day. Well, ar- around the Super Bowl, you guys oh, were yeah. dumped. But that's I think that was appropriate. <laughs> I mean, we, we're the bold North. We kind of had to own it. Um, that's why I wish you guys made it. And then probably the past put a one. But that's I'm a big Patriot fan. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, we, we kind of want to turn the conversation back a little bit towards. Um, I'm, I'm asked. To, I want to ask you a couple canned questions. Okay. And it's more. So did did the guys at the booth? Did we talk to you about the whole be thankful what we're trying to do? No. So it's. I think you'd get this right away. The whole. A lot of folks in the industry or any industry really, when it comes to trade shows, they're like, ah, we got to do a trade show, and uh, let's just let's just do it. Here's our banner stand. Here's our table throw. Here's our big booth. We're done. What's the next show? Whereas. Guy Zwick, the CEO of the company and his whole team, they're saying, no, flip your thinking. Let's let's treat trade shows as a gift. Let's be thankful that we have the opportunity to shake hands, to meet with people, to actually progress relationships. So the whole be thankful mm-hmm. motif. So our question to you is, why are you thankful for trade shows? I really like that thinking, especially as someone who manages the trade shows. It's super easy to only think of like the shipping and the drayage, and I have to pay this much for a square of carpet and this much to rent a garbage basket, exactly. and it's just like uh, out you, of control. You, union labor, what? Right. Yeah, so, but what we found, so we do um, track our funnel. You do, okay. and that has really, I guess, to use your term, flipped the way that we've thought about trade really? shows. So we invest a huge chunk of our budget on trade shows because right. like I meant, this stuff ain't cheap. No, I'm with you. Even, even small little 10 it, by 10 oh tables. Oh my gosh. And those take twice as much work. Right. Do you, do, you just, guys, do you guys FedEx ship? Do, how do you guys ship? you guys UPS or do you guys use, do you use a trucking company? Well, <laughs> we do what we can. I right. mean, it's whoever. So exactly. We, but... So what we've seen is in tracking these leads is our leads have gone down okay. from trade shows. However, it is one of the top three closing lead sources See, for us. And it has okay. the highest amount of units. So the, what you, what units? So we track our customers by how many trucks they have. Okay. That's how they get classified. And okay. It's a small account, a regional account, Fair a yeah, large units? national account. Gotcha. So the accounts that we're closing from trade shows are have more trucks than others. That's awesome. That's uh, the, that's probably some information now you're impressing me because some people don't even go to that level. Right. And, and that's so really helped us because it is, you know, you look at, I'm a huge data and like okay. a Google Sheets like Ninja. Okay. And so I love tracking it because it is, you look at it, okay, we're spending six figures on trade shows. 
what are we getting out of it? Right. It's more than just, you know, leads because, you know, if in marketing, if we're doing our job right, we shouldn't have people walking up to us at a booth that's never heard of us. Sure. You know, so how can we show that we're nurturing these customers? So I think being thankful for getting in front of them and having an opportunity Part of what's neat about being an old school industry right. is it's all about relationships. Absolutely. These people, it's the same people you see every year and every show, but they're super excited and they love helping each other out. That's they're cool. happy to be there. They are passionate about what they do. Right. I mean, it's some of the most humble. I have a whole new respect for trucking that I you see, know, before never Before you knew, right. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's basically a family. Yeah, and it's these a tra- total family. And these, these, these trade shows allow you to just be human again yeah. and, and, and culture or cultivate those relationships. Absolutely. The next question then is, because um, you've, been, you've been doing trade shows, some of the smaller ones, but some big ones in events too, um, what is something the trade show industry could improve upon to make it better? There's probably a lot of them yeah. in your mind. I mean, one of them might be don't charge us so much for oh AV, gosh. for example. But that's yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I put you on yeah, the spot. No, it's okay. It's all right. But if, um, you, if you were forced to answer, even if it's something like, you know, whatever. I wish all forms could be done online. <laughs> like, oh I can't my. believe faxing forms is still a thing. This guy over there at Exhibit Power, uh, the one with the hat, I'm not sure you can see him, that he has this, and it's not so much for the front end, but yeah, he was just, he has a whole, his whole program, his whole reason for being here is a software that allows uniformity. So you fill out something once and it's done. And it integrates with other things. And you're right. People still fax. Like it's 2018 now. I have to fax things. This is bananas. Thank you. <laughs> and we should have... I'm going to have you on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the... I'm going to have you as a guest speaker on one of the podcasts. And we'll just talk about how, from a technology perspective, just... Just wake up a little bit. You don't have to be super razzle dazzle, but at least like Adobe makes editable form. Imagine that. Yeah. It just it blows my mind. I gotta print this. I gotta fill it out, and I have to fax. I, mean, I can't people just don't take even a picture have of it. Fax machines anymore. I don't. Yeah, that's, Why would you? This is this is so it's a, that's yeah. great. So just get up, get up to date with at some least technology. just up to par. <laughs> right, <laughs> close to it anyway. <laughs> a right. Bit. Just, how about enter twenty fifteen? I'm I'm, I'm yeah, okay with that. We can go back to there. But in general, so I'm with you. It's a it's a very common, um, great answer by the way. But it's a very common answer, which was listen, we we love what we do, but make it a little bit easier for us doing them because it's such a pain in the rear end to actually have to do. I mean, forms. it's hard to put thought into making it. You know, how do I do events or how do I make it worthwhile when you spend so much time and energy just getting the basics? Thank you. It's so much logistical headaches. And forget mm-hmm. it, and, and then it takes away from the other how you can really enter right. an event. Well, beautiful. I know that you have probably other things to do today. And I just, uh, um, I, I, and then you guys go home tomorrow, you think? Or is yeah, we're headed out tomorrow. Back to the We have a, North. a four month old son. So Who's taking care of him? My parents. Oh my God. It was so. first, the first time you've been away? Yeah. See, I don't think I did that. My wife still hasn't been away from Nico. He's two now. Great. Thank you for listening to Creative Spaces Podcast. For more information about Highway 85 Creative, visit us at highway85creative.com.